April 19th, Sorel Sound is proud to present one of Canada's hottest beatmakers, Eloquent. As a Guelph native, Eloquent has been making a name for himself signing to HW and W in LA, Still Music in Paris, and UrbanNet in Canada. He has just returned fresh off his European tour to promote his latest EP, Parallel. Bow. Special guests include Jay Downs performing his new EP, The Road, Treetop Entertainment, Jazz Toe, and Bill Beeman. CJW's The Come Up Show will also be celebrating its six-year anniversary. Friday, April 19th at the Blackshire Pub, located on 511 Talbot Street. Admission is only $5 and full details are available at thecomeupshow.com. This event is proudly supported by 94.9 CJW. Now, the moment we've all been waiting for, very excited for this. A little bit about the event before I uh, start talking to our guest, Eloquent. The Come Up Show and Sorel Sound are teaming up this year for the Come Up Show's sixth anniversary, uh, and they're bringing you, obviously, one of Canada's hottest beat makers, doing it right now, Eloquent. Um, and a little bit about him, he is signed to Huh, What & Where Records in L.A., still music in Paris, and he uh, releases a lot of stuff via Herbnet here in Canada. Um, he just returned back here to Canada from his European tour after dropping his latest EP, Parallel, via Herbnet Records. Now, a little bit about the show. Uh, it's going down at the Blackshire Pub on Talbot Street in the upstairs, uh, April 19th. That's next Friday. Uh, and tickets will be available for five bucks. So it's going to be a great event. Now, I should have Eloquent on the phone. How are you, sir? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. How you doing, man? Good. Thank you. I'm, I'm super excited to talk to you. Obviously, a lot of people... Um, a lot of people, I know a lot of my friends who are into uh, kind of instrumental hip-hop stuff like that, uh, knew your name <laughs> for a long time, didn't really realize you are from Guelph. Does that happen a lot? Do you get kind of some surprise that you're from an area that's a little bit disconnected from sort of the major centers? Yeah, yeah, I get that quite a bit. I mean, most, uh, like especially whenever I'm, I guess, talking to anybody who's not really from Ontario... You know, when I tell them, like, yeah, yeah, I'm from Guelph, and they're kind of just looking at each other. And, <laughs> yeah. You know, and I, I, like, I, I think I, I kind of just get grouped into into Toronto a lot. Yeah. Which, yeah. I, uh, um, which I, I, I guess I understand, but, but yeah, not not many people really think of Guelph as a sort of like, you know, spot for <laughs> for like beats or anything like that. Has it been has it been kind of a conscious decision to stay there? Like, have you does the isolation help a little bit? Like, do you kind of find you you work better in an environment where you're not you're kind of free to do your own thing, that sort of thing? Um. Yes. Yes and no. I mean, I like like I, I've got family and you know a lot of things going on in Guelph, which is the main reason why I'm still here. Mm -hmm. Um, like I've definitely entertained the idea of, you know, moving out to Toronto or, or wherever. And, you know, I'm sure one, one day I'll, one day I'll eventually do that. But for now, you know, I'm, I'm happy where I'm at mm -hmm. and, and I don't know, kind of the, the little notoriety that I sometimes get for, you know, just being this beat maker from, Guelph of all places. I don't know. It's it, it, it's kind of a it is kind of a neat thing to catch people off guard with sometimes. You yeah, know? and it speak. I think it speaks a lot to your music. the The amount of success and the sort of following you've gained. You're you're in Guelph. You haven't. I guess as a result, it might have been a, a little difficult to take part in any sort of scene movement, the kind that are, that happened with L.A. and the beat scene, Flying Lotus, and all that. But I think it, it really sort of says a lot about how good your music is, that despite being from Guelph, somewhere that's a little bit separated, you've you've sort of obviously made quite a name for yourself. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, I guess it, it, it's still all a, a work in progress, I mm -hmm. suppose. But I mean, I remember even when I first started, uh, like, going into Toronto on a regular basis to like to do shows and to go to events and you know the there definitely wasn't very much of a scene then you mm. know like there's definitely people doing it but but no I mean I, I've been out to LA a few times and you know it's definitely not as as active as as it is there right. but I also see that as a as a challenge to you know to help help build up build up the scene even even from from a little bit of a distance you know yeah absolutely and i think i 
I would like to say to you as well, it feels kind of, it's nice to have an array of Canadian talent representing our country. You've got the same thing going on with uh, a lot of guys in, uh, out in Montreal, obviously, Kay Trinata, who's uh, obviously affiliated with How One Wear Records as well. You've got people like Lunis and, and Ryan Hemsworth. So it's very cool to have yeah. have quite a quite a few talented beat makers. Now, I wanted to... Um, Wanted to talk to you about Europe because you uh, you just returned, am I right? You were in Paris, was it, and maybe the UK? Oh, I was in um, I was in Glasgow, uh, Brighton, Berlin, and Paris. Awesome! How did it How did it go yeah, out there? I, oh, it was amazing! It was amazing! It was um, like that was my first time out in out in Europe, so it was definitely really just humbling to. You know, to see like a completely different type of type of life, and mm -hmm. you know, every every city I went to had a completely different vibe and flavor to it. You know, were there different kind so, of were there different responses from different audiences, uh, like between like Berlin, Paris, Brighton? Obviously, I would imagine it's a lot different than um, than some sort of southwestern Ontario shows, stuff like that. But was there still kind of a were there differences between those cities or definitely definitely and and i mean i think that holds true with literally every every place i go like europe or or otherwise um like being in you know like when i was out in brighton for example i mean like 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 they they got really really live out there <laughs> and you know they ended up like crashing the stage and you know, like like the type of thing that you know that like that's never happened to me at a show in, in Toronto, for example. Um, and then you know, out in Paris, like like they love to dance out there, you yeah. know. And and yeah, they they go hard in Berlin. <laughs> you know, I, like yeah. I mean, every every place that I went to, I mean, I, I can't I can't honestly say that one place felt just like the other like mm -hmm. it was always a little different and so like the way that i approach like putting my sets together and stuff you know you have to you have to take some of these things into consideration sometimes because you know certain things that you know i do in toronto may not may not fly in the uk right you know for for, for example mm -hmm. but but it, it's very no, it was it was amazing, and and just the fact that it's it's not it's not really the exact same type of crowd or experience that you accept. You right. know, I kind of see that as a as a challenge, and you know, you, you never really want to do the same thing for too too long in the same place. Mm -hmm. Now, is it? Um, we played just believe a little bit earlier. The uh, the first single from believing the upcoming album i would imagine it was probably a pretty inspiring time there did you get a, a chance to do a lot of work on the album while you were out there uh yeah in fact that that song uh, just believe um like i was in an airport um i think from from the uk like on on my way to berlin and you know, I had some time to kill it. I just started working on that there. And then when I got to Berlin, I was working on it a little bit more before like before the show and so forth. I mean, I had I had like held off on on turning in the turning in the album to how it went and where bef until I like went on this trip because I, I knew mm -hmm. that, you know, like going out there for the first time was like a pretty I guess pretty big deal for me on a personal level. Yeah. So I wanted some of that experience to 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 make it on the album. And, and there's at least three or four that did. So awesome. Is it? Do we have kind of a tentative date on when we might expect believing to come out, or is it still kind of going through all the rounds and people taking a listen to it and everything? Um. Well, there's no definitive date. I mean, I've. I guess without getting into too too much detail, I mean I'm working, like I'm working with a, a couple different artists, um, like just on some like features and collaborations, and and that's mm. that along with you know minor things like mixing and right. stuff like that. Uh, but it's pretty much in the final stretch. Um, the few people who've heard 
you know, heard the first draft so far seem like seem pretty excited for it. So definitely looking forward to seeing how you know how everybody else embraces it. Fantastic. Well, based on just believe, I'm I'm getting very excited. The last full length, I guess, was uh, the Midnight After. I know you put out parallel uh, earlier or later last year, I suppose. But I think it it was the Midnight After was the last full length LP, right? Uh, oh no no, there there's one more in between that one in parallel. Oh, um, okay. Called Scenic Route. Okay. Um. Yeah. So that came out. Uh. I want to say it was. Er, yeah, it was early 2012. Yeah, and then Parallel was towards the end of the year. Fantastic. Well, I um, I was uh, I was uh, enjoying Parallel quite a bit, and I I kind of wanted to uh, take a minute to talk about your show as well because I I would imagine myself included a lot of people haven't been to an eloquent show. So, would you be able to kind of are you playing a, a live set? I guess not a DJ set. Yeah, I mean it's. Uh Look, I play a live set on, um, like, on my SP404. Right, okay. Um, and then I've got, you know, I actually have an iPad that I like, link into it, which, you know, I play with synths and trigger other samples and stuff like that. Um, very, very much, a, again, a, a work in progress, but, you know, I've been having some fun with it. Um, I guess as far as the Describing my set, um, you know, like I'm, I'm just playing like a lot of my works, and you know, I've got some some segments for a few songs where I'm just breaking them down and I'm playing them live, or I'm doing like the the, the drums live, or I'm on the iPad playing keys over top of other stuff, and then you know, and then you might even hear, uh, you know a couple of random songs just from like some homies or something mm-hmm. like that. So I'm, I'm, I don't know. I guess I don't really want to stick to too much of a too much of a formula per se. Mm-hmm. Um, ultimately you just want to play some tunes and you know just get you know just get people vibing. Fantastic. Um, so yeah just a lot of uh, a lot of heavy like mm-hmm. bass heavy stuff. And then, you know, I might switch it up and sort of mellow it a little bit. So. Awesome. I, I wanted to also talk to you, speaking of your kind of, your colleagues, I guess, <laughs> for lack of a better word, at, at Hunt, huh, What, and Where, because I'm a big fan of the label. I, I was kind of wondering how you linked up with the guys. Uh, that was, oh, that was, that was interesting. <laughs> um, at the time, it was, I think, 2011 or so. Mm-hmm. It, it was before I did the Midnight After album. And, you know, like, I had just done, uh, like, my first my first album with Still Music, which was called Persona. And, um, and you know, I was, I was working on this new record, which was the the After Midnight follow-up. And, and I don't know, I was just just bored one day on Facebook and then I, I get a I get a message from from Bowie who you know like I'd known who he was just through you know like a lot of the homies and like and like Los Angeles and so forth mm-hmm. uh, cause he he's part of the My Hollow Drum Collective mm-hmm. which uh, you know which has a really I guess is a really reputable name out there and he just sort of hit me up, like, like yeah, 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 you know, just wanted to say that I'm a super, super big fan, and this, that, and yeah, man, we got this, we got this terrible label that we just started up, and we got no talent at all, and <laughs> man, like, like Juge is like our best out, is like our best artist, and man, we need to, we need to inject some talent up into it. I mean, like that, that same sort of like nonchalant kind of like crapping all over himself <laughs> um it's crazy yeah, to think actually how far it's come ba- from there as well you got people like Taku and Keitranata and Evil Needle does it feel was that kind of a conscious thing did you notice how how kind of you guys were blown up a little bit well I mean at, at the time when when Bowie invited me to to join the team at, at that point the label consisted of 
just Bowie, Juge, Kofi, and then there might have been one or two other people who I'm not even sure are still on on the label. Mm -hmm. Um, But at least the one thing Bowie always tells me is that I guess once I sort of agreed to like once I agreed to, to join the team and you know I guess the feeling there was like yo man like how how did we pull this off yo like <laughs> like Alquin is, is like Jordan or some something like that <laughs> um in which case I guess after myself and a couple other people joined on and then I think people really started to like spot the like spot the potential right like, alright so like like EQ's on this label and oh crazy like, <laughs> like Taku just just joined this label and you know, and it, it got to the point where, you know, every now and then I'd get I'd get a message from somebody on Facebook or Twitter or whatever, like, or emailing me like, like, yo, man, I, I just did this new beat tape. You think you could submit it or send it off to how went and where? Like, mm-hmm. like yo, man, I'm, I'm, I'm not an A&R or nothing. Um, but, but yeah, I think it was very much like a, a snowball effect. Because, I mean, now you've got, like, there's a lot more attention to the label, which which ultimately was was the goal. And and I think especially since, like, Taku just exploded in the yeah. last year or so. Mm-hmm. And and, and shouts out to him and shouts out to, to K Trinata, too, because he's, he's really doing the same thing. Yeah, I think uh, I'm actually going to... I got tracks from both of them coming up. I was a little overexcited about having a How, What, and Where sort of affiliate on the show, so we're going to play a little bit of everybody. Do yeah, you... Um, that dude, though. Yeah, he's, he's, he's prolific, too. Like, he's putting out remixes left and right, stuff like that. I kind of, yeah. Yeah, I mean, between... Yeah, between him... Between him and Taku, I mean, you'd be very hard-pressed to, to find anybody... Like anybody in this beat scene, other than maybe, I don't know, like knowledge or some mm-hmm. or, or someone like that, you know, who like who's got a bigger work ethic, mm-hmm. you know, like dude has literally beats for days, <laughs> all of them, and and yeah, and that plays a big role in why like they're really starting to, to pop off right now. Now I wanted to I wanted to talk as well about um, and this is something that I noticed with a lot of of beat makers coming up. Taku's one of them as well. Um, being on a, a couple different labels, is it ever a struggle, or is it is it kind of you you know what beats are going where, what releases are going out via which label, or is it just something that sort of happens? Um. Well. The cool thing with um, with everybody I work with, in, including Urbnet too, is mm-hmm. that you know, like I didn't I didn't sign any sort of deal that you know that forces me to work exclusively with just one one label, mm-hmm. you know. So and ultimately, everybody, ultimately everybody that I I work with, like like I consider them I consider them fam. So, you know, and I I always sort of try to to, to divvy it up because certain types of records that I do, you know, when I'm when I'm putting them together, I'm I'm thinking to myself like like yeah, you know, I think you know, I think the the, the French audience is really going to eat this up, mm-hmm. you know. So, and that's not to say that any one record couldn't be successful or work on any other one but you know I guess like the guys in How and Nowhere definitely have a a bigger pull or fan base out in like California and other parts of the states where you know like still music holds me down really well in in, in Paris especially um, did you get a chance a to of, did you get a chance to link up with those guys when you went out to Paris was that kind of how it came about I did I did. It was the first. Well, it was the first time I'd met them face to face, obviously. Mm-hmm. But, but, but yeah. I mean, when I was out there, I I got to play. I got to play three like three different shows out there, and and it was crazy. You know, like there was a handful of people who, you know, I saw at the first show, second, and third. You know, so 
they yeah they really did they really did a good job of I guess building building the name because I genuinely had no idea that that many people knew like even knew who I was out there mm-hmm. and then and then the thing with Herbnet was that um, interestingly enough I tend to get a little more attention I find from my tr- you know, in the States and Europe and, and elsewhere. And I don't know, I, I kind of felt like, like I was slept on in Canada for a, a pretty long time. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so it was, it was fitting that, you know, that I at least rep for the homeland and, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, well, like I said, it was to work with the release music, like with a, like with a, a legit Canadian label. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, now I just wanted to. We'll let you go in a minute. I just wanted to before uh, before you head back. I wanted to ask, sort of, do you have any touring plans? Uh, we know the album's coming out, sort of, within the near future. Any any other big things on the horizon? Um. So I mean, outside of the the record, um, I guess there's a lot of a lot of things are are in the works. Mm-hmm. Um, like as far as as far as tours and further shows, I mean, I definitely like once this new record comes out. I mean, I definitely want to want to hit the road. You know, there's a few, you know, there's a few different uh, places and cities and and even countries that you know that are up in I guess in the discussion right now. Mm-hmm. Um, but I guess without jinxing it, we'll we'll, we'll see where things go. Mm-hmm. But you know, I'm definitely, I'm definitely looking them to make the rounds. Awesome. Well, it, it's been a pleasure to talk to you. Um, we are going to play another track now. We're going to play Parallel, I think. Um, just a reminder for everyone who's been out there listening, uh, Eloquent will be down on the 19th of April. That is next Friday for the Come Up Show's sixth anniversary, playing at Blackshire Pub on Talbot Street. Uh, five bucks at the door come down if you there's not going to be anything bigger for <laughs> at least in my world in the in the world of the hip-hop fan in london ontario until sean price comes along the next uh i, I think it's the next monday or the next sunday so we're very excited thanks so much for talking to us eloquent oh thank thank you for having me thank you for having me i'm 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 definitely looking forward to, to coming out for the show i mean i've uh like i've been to london a couple times to like to party with some of my homies who went to Western, but I'm, I'm definitely, definitely interested in, you know, in just having, having some fun out there. 419. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. We might be crossing over into 420 territory, I think during your set. So very yeah, excited. That, that's what I've heard. That's <laughs> what I've heard. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's been a pleasure. We'll, uh, I'll talk to you off air a little bit, but for now we're going to play eloquent, uh, parallel on 94.9 CHW radio.